start the recording. And a couple of us have to leave at half past the hour. Elizabeth, the chaos community manager, should be here. And if there's things that kind of need to be talked about in that remaining half, I think she can, you know, kind of help in that regard as well. So, all right. So, yeah. So today is is add yourself. And how you're feeling, we usually have an icebreaker question at the beginning of each, each one. This is the easiest icebreaker question for us all. They do get more complicated, like if you understand how clouds can float, even though they weigh more than elephants. <laughs> Things like that, but we'll start out with an easy one. So I'm doing pretty well today. And I'll share my screen. <laughs> everybody in the last one everybody just answered that's what google is for <laughs> one person mentioned density which i think is the the proper answer <laughs> it's a density issue so um tired but surviving i can appreciate that stephanie the end of the semester this is always i tell people being in the university setting this is always the time of the year where everybody's like hey. we're, we were supposed to meet all year and we haven't met and so now we must meet <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> before everybody, before everybody scatters for the summer <laughs> i know we, and our quarter system makes it a little worse because you're like it extends it until june and you're just like oh god <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm putting the minutes uh jacob great to have you here how are you Good. minutes are in the chat and salona great to have you here as well some minutes are in the chat Please add yourself and tell us how you're feeling today. Um, so I, I think, you know, today we, it might be nice to, even though we all know each other, just to do a few introductions across the board, because this is our first meeting um, and just kind of how we plan on, on structuring this. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I thought we could, you know, talk a little bit about agenda setting for this group. Um, this is, you know, kind of what you're all hoping to accomplish through there and then maybe some uh, simple first steps uh, to accomplish those things or how we can think about that uh, moving forward and also answer any questions that you all might have just in terms of like resource availability you know through the chaos project um, events that we have how you can, we can do partnerships whatever it might be we can kind of answer all of those questions as well um so I'll, I'll start um, I am Matt German prey and I'm uh, a professor at the University of Nebraska Omaha and also one of the co-founders of the Chaos Project. It's great to have all of you here. Um, Claire, you want to introduce yourself real fast? Hello everyone. Um, I wear a couple of hats. If I can go through the hats, that would be that would be probably good. Um, so I uh, have been working with the Ospo Plus Plus group in terms of actually looking at open source program offices in public sector. I'm also working with Inner Source Commons as their executive director. So interested in Inner Source or the practice of open source in organizations. If folks are interested in that, um, and I'm based here in Dublin. I'm also a PhD student in the University of Galway, and now currently a member of Lero, who have their own Ospo as well. Hey. So, uh, yeah, there we go. There's a new one. <laughs> um, so, um, so, so that's that's my background. I'm delighted to be here. Also, want to mention that uh, I was. I, I'm hoping we get to also reference the workshop that we had in Brussels um, as well, Matt. At some point in time, just to talk about the 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 origins here. But uh, that would be great. But hello, everyone. Love to be here. Uh, Saeed, you want to go? Sure. Uh, I'm Saeed Shirdri. I'm the director of the Open Source Programs Office here at Carnegie Mellon um, and was at that workshop virtually uh, that Claire mentioned uh, in Brussels. So definitely want to plus one that that idea. Great. Great to have you here. Uh, how about Salona? Can you are you? Cough, cough, on mute. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, I basically had a chronic cough since I got back from Singapore four weeks ago. It's killing me. Um, so um, I'm, I've got a couple hats on as well. Um, so I've got the um, on the advisory board for Open at RIT hat, you know, specifically for this one. Um, I'm now the treasurer of the Foundation for Public Code North American chapter. Um, which just got started. We just got our, we just got, uh, did the whole 501c3 thing for that. Um, uh, Intersource Commons as well. 
uh, with Claire. Um, and then uh, I'm also on um, standict.eu, uh, which is working on, you know, um, the standards consultancy thing and trying to be a subject matter experts to different groups in regards to that. Um, and I, I think that, oh, oh, <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> I'm the executive director of IEEE SA Open. <laughs> And I'm the founder of Leading Bit. <laughs> Other than I was that. being very focused on <laughs> academia. I'm sorry, <laughs> but thank you. Well, it's great to see you again, Salona. Nice to have you here. Um, Jacob, you want to go? Oh, hey, everyone. Everyone probably knows me. I'm Jacob Green, uh, one of the founders of Oslo Plus Plus and the Institutes of Applied Open Source, and I'm based here in Baltimore. Great. Thanks for being here, Jacob. It's really nice to have you. Um, Jen, how about you? Um, this is only the second chaos meeting I've ever been to, so I have Yay! nothing to list <laughs> as a person. Um, I work at Cornell University Library. I'm a librarian. Um, we participate in a lot of open source projects, and I have a research project of my own um, related to how libraries might um, use the chaos metrics and how those sort of match up with some of the narratives that we already tell ourselves about our open source projects. Great. Well, it's great to have you here, Jen, and thanks for being at your second chaos meeting. <laughs> and I know you've made other contributions too. So um, how about Vinod? Hi, everyone. I'm Vinod Ahuja. I'm in a transition phase. I just graduated from University of Nebraska, Omaha. And I'm at a student, so I just finished my PhD and I'm going to join Florida Gulf Coast University as an assistant professor starting from August. So, and I've been with Chaos for law since its inception. So I'm deeply involved in Chaos. Great, Vanan. Thanks for being here. Um, I know. How about Stephanie? Hi, Stephanie at the at UC uh, Santa Cruz, um, uh, setting up the OSPO here as well as the uh, the executive director for the Center for Research in Open Source Software. Great, thanks for being here, Stephanie. And Elizabeth, you're up. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. I'm the Chaos Community Manager, and I've been in Chaos for about three years. Um, I also recognize a few of you from uh, my work on All In with um, that group over there too. So I kind of also wear a few hats. Um, and I'm here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Great to see everybody. Well, thank you. And even though I thought I knew really everybody on this call, I learned a lot, even just from all the jobs you do and all the different things. Claire, I did not know you were in a PhD program. I'm just going to say that straight, <laughs> straight out. How, how long have you been in the PhD program? Yeah, I said that's new, but actually it's in September. So, so I need to get, okay. get the move on, really. <laughs> all right. Oh, that's great. Well, I, that is, that's really fantastic. I love Galway, too. It's a, one of my more favorite cities. Um, all right, cool. So, you know, I think um, from from our perspective, I just wanted to, to kind of let you know that the way that we're setting up, we're calling these context groups at the moment in the chaos project. And we have a variety of different groups that we're working with. So uh, universities being one, um, we do have a context group with uh, corporate OSPOs. So corporate OSPOs have similar value questions around the work that they're doing. Um, and we're also working with uh, scientific software communities uh, like in the R space and the Python space, because a lot of those communities, and I know that there's probably some overlap between science and university, but nonetheless, um, we kind of have these different groups. The hope is, is that the groups can kind of learn from each other as we build these out over time. Um, the OSPO one in corporate setting is a little bit older, maybe, you know, three or four months down the road at this point, um, but not a lot. Um, the intention here is with these context groups is that you, you all kind of know what you're looking for in your particular context, or you might hope you know what you're looking for in your particular context when it comes to metrics and things you want to take a look at and, and how to articulate that within your particular setting. Um, we here at the Chaos Project would help uh, to develop those metrics, develop those metrics models, um, even put them into practice through software, just kind of help foster that conversation um, that would be beneficial for you. The intention here is that that you wouldn't necessarily like participate deeply in the chaos project unless you want to. 
So if there are metrics or metrics models that you think would be valuable in your situation or in your context, we would develop those and then bring them back to this group. You know what I mean? So we're trying to help you be a little bit separated from the project uh, itself or kind of some of those deep workings, because I know you're all busy and the last thing you need is to maybe join a whole nother project <laughs> and attend a whole bunch of other meetings. Does that at least it, on it, at the surface make sense for folks? I'm seeing some nods. I, I often take un, not nods as <laughs> as affirmation as well. So that's pretty good for me. All right. So, um, you know, I, I think maybe one of the first things that would be useful here for folks is maybe just kind of an open discussion on on kind of where we started. And this could be to your point, uh, Claire, you know what I mean? We could kind of start with what happened in Dublin and you could give your perspective there. And then what maybe a few, you know, things forward or things that you would like to see from this work uh, that we could start kind of agenda setting around. So Claire, maybe I could turn it over to you and you could give just some perspective on where you were at joining ChaosCon. <laughs> you know what I mean? That whole that whole thought process there. So take it away, Claire. Well, thank you. Thank you again. Um, so yes, so my first Chaos Con was Dublin. You're right. But that was not where we had the workshop. So I, I so I have been a fan of the Chaos uh, community's work and, and visited Chaos Con in Dublin, yep. heard some of the great work they were it doing. Brussels. No, but that's all right, because it was the origin of the idea to actually do something in Brussels. <laughs> so I'm just going to stop. I'm just going to stop talking. Then, and you <laughs> When the Brussels Chaos Con came around um, as part of FOTHEM, um, we reached out and thought it wouldn't it be nice to do something, a workshop um, uh, as part as a kind of a side event, a uh, sister event to that event um, to specifically focus on open source in universities, um, you know, looking at and inviting along the folks that we knew who were doing OSPOs in the academic space as well. Um, I suppose just a couple of things about what was interesting about that. I'll share now in a minute the, the the kind of some of the insights that we had from that. But the biggest, I suppose, the two biggest things that I thought was was really interesting about about that meeting was that um, first of all, it was fantastic to have the chaos community come along to that. Folks that had been so experienced in actually looking at the metrics. Um, but as we discussed, oh, sorry, that was the first thing. And the second thing is that we had a lot of people there from universities who weren't necessarily even in OSPOs, but 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 had come along from their university just because they were interested in open source. And we had a great discussion um, looking at the kind of three areas of um, some of the goals of certainly OSPOs in, in universities, uh, which are often around research translation, education and excellence in terms of their own practice of open source as well. Um, and what was really interesting about that discussion was that of all the kind of metrics we talked about in terms of, or sorry, the measurements we talked about, because we didn't really get into metrics um, around how and what we might like to look at from a university context, I don't think any of them had necessarily been explored to date in the chaos community. They were they were kind of um, different to the ones that they had already experienced from the corporate context. So that was the big takeaway from that uh, workshop. And uh, it's one of the reasons why I think this this context meeting is 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 so valuable. And thank you to Matt and the chaos community for helping us uh, set it up. And uh, it would be fantastic to, to see what will come out of it. And I'm going to share now the, 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 the document that we created as the output from, from that meeting as well. So let me just Great. get that. Can up. you put it in the chat? And yeah, I'll put it in minutes. the chat and the minutes. Did I get that right? Research translation training? And what was that? Yes. So and research. So the excellence in open source internally within the university. So education okay. for students and researchers and then excellent. research translation. Yeah. Okay. With the three areas we focused on in the workshop. Thanks for helping me. <laughs> Somebody typing. <laughs> I forgot. How do I raise my hand on this damn thing? Uh, go to reactions, I think. Huh. I, I see clapping and funny one i don't see yeah <laughs> exactly that's what doing, i was doing we, kevin we i don't just, know if you saw me or not but uh do what you're doing now and we know that you want to say something so <laughs> salona <laughs> yeah sorry thanks um yeah so um and i see some faces who were also there um you know the ford foundation last week did this thing in new york where they talked about um their digital infrastructure fund um, of course, at first I was really sad when I found out that it was like two and a half million. I was just like, what? No. Ah, 
Um, but then when I sat there and saw that it was mostly about um, research and getting those numbers together, that was, I have to admit, one of the things that really inspired me to come to the meeting today is to, <laughs> you know, see what was going on, especially since y'all are having this, because of, you know, that being such an important part of the of funding and getting funding, you know, is, is doing that. And so it's like, you know, and of course, I'm still watching the um, digital public goods and what they're trying to do in that space. But I figure if we could also do something along those lines, um, that would be really useful. So that's what I, I wanted to like say hey about. Thanks. Is it about an important part of funding from like groups like Ford and Sloan is to demonstrate? Yeah, yeah. And, and not just them, honestly. Um, so there's some crazy stuff going down right now in like NSF funding. So I'm applying to two different grants with Open at RIT, um, uh -huh. where we're looking at some what you know because they're spending a lot of money on digital infrastructure and not always not not always in the ways that I would go about doing it, um, but they're definitely throwing some serious cash around. Um, so is it about to like that. to demonstrate? the the work that a research group is doing is having an impact and therefore you should give us more money is that your takeaway from that no no i'm taking in that um for a lot of these groups what they're researching is saying they're saying what is happening and how is that impacting right so it's kind of like the state of opens that you see a lot of us doing um okay. <clears throat> but i think that there's more that's there there in regards to understanding like they I feel like a lot of times, and you know, I this might just be me, but in other groups like academia and such, they don't always know how to do the community metrics the way that we've been doing the community metrics. And so okay. it would be really good to um, help them out with that and also help them out with the patterns that get to that kind of um, openness that we do, right? And so some of it is how we measure it, but some of it is also like how we give a bunch of our people the agency to do what they do to create even more numbers like you know like this is a silly example but it's one that hits me in the teeth all of the time like OSINT and op you know open source and social media and promotion right it's hard to get people to to know what's going on or to come or to participate or to volunteer or things of that nature so you first have to get out there and let people know um, if you have better numbers in regards to doing that and you've shown that you've done that really well, like you really have established a community. The community okay. is really out there. It is, you know, growing and participating and getting everyone involved. Gotcha. Then then that can lead to better funding for these these grants. Um, okay. Now, That's fair. <clears throat> we've still got a lot of gatekeeping going on, but, you know, I'm having a lot of high level conversations right now about that gatekeeping um, where I'm like the, our current grant methodology is not going to work for open source, um, you know, because everybody keeps saying, oh, we're going to spend all this money in the U.S. government on open source. And I'm like, yeah, but the way that you're doing it is all through like NSF grants and things like that. And that's um, problematic for the normal open source groups. And so I really do feel like the university OSPOs become a really good gateway of mentorship and training for different open source projects who do want to work with the academic institutions and then also get that additional funding. So I agree. That's yeah. great. I think even to your point, I mean, I had put in there help agencies in these patterns. Like yes. if, if we if we could help agencies <laughs> out the things that need to be looked a at thousand, as well. A thousand, a thousand percent on that. Um uh because you know I just see it Matt so often where they really don't know how to um measure this correctly like they don't mm -hmm. know how to measure open source projects and know if they're good or viable or things you know like that's a constant conversation I'm having with foundations and I know Saeed's doing the same and Jacob's doing the same you know when <laughs> yes and Kevin is doing the same we're all trying to get in there to like have them understand no this 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 is a good community or or this this community is important but needs help um okay, and so going through and like creating those metrics I think would be extremely valuable to getting hands on some of that funding thank you thank you i just i just want to uh, plus yeah. a thousand i guess again what salona just said um and and you know add to that that um what tends to happen at least in proposals i've been involved with and reviewed and and, and seen and so on is the metrics end up being for that individual university right or that individual project that, that that's what they end up sort of 
defaulting to is, you know, look at it from the lens of the project we're working on or the impact it might have within our university. And then the other is, uh, you know, NSF has it clearly laid out, but most federal funders and even private funders have these two broad categories, intellectual merit and broader impacts, right? So broader impacts almost always ends up being, and we'll do something about diversity. And that's good. I'm, 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 all, I'm for that. I, I, I support that. But it can be a lot more than that, right? So I, I think it's not only the core sort of, you know, what's being proposed by the team and, you know, everything Salona said, but it can also be a, a, a more, uh, you know, richer definition of what broader impacts might be and how you measure those. Great. I appreciate that. And Kevin, did you have a comment? Yeah, build, building on that a little bit with the uh, with uh, uh, granting agencies and, and funding for uh, the, these projects, the, the funding is, is is temporary, so there's no sustainability built into the funding. So as academics, we we all kind of know that when the when the money runs out, we we often move to other areas. Uh, so building building sustainability into the the funding. Uh, from these granting organizations is a is a really uh, big consideration. Great, um, thank you. Okay, this is this is great. Um, are there, with respect to um, how about I'll also turn maybe to Stephanie and Jen as. Folks who work in OSPOs or in this space, things that, you know, useful stories that um, or stories that would be e easier to tell through metrics or perhaps, you know, things, things to think about there. Yeah, I mean, I think that for us, uh, the, the, the metrics is something that we, I, it, really helpful for us to kind of get something that, because that a lot of the questions we get from, uh, folks who are working on open source that maybe we haven't been working directly with and we're, we're basically trying to create basically a, a methodology for finding and uh, what is happening on our campus that we're not seeing. Um, and um, one way of doing that, of course, is to being able to have a structure that shows that, you know, we have something like metrics or something that we can give to them that they, they, they'll want, they'll seek us out as much as we're seeking them out. Um, and I think that that's something that this, especially that some of the work that we're talking about here is, I think, been particularly useful for us. Um, and I, I do think it, it kind of reiterating some of the what has already been said, it is just different uh, from a university perspective. And there's a lot of different things that I think we have to look at. And each university being a bit in themselves being, you know, having kind of difference differences about what seen as important. Um, the, the, and I think the sustainability question is also something that we're looking a lot at and seeing how, so we don't have to, it isn't about oh, what's the next NSF you know, grant. It's more like setting this up, maybe using that as the seed funding for starting something, but then being able to link it to what's seen as kind of sustainable within, within the university. Is it something that the university itself wants to, um, to maintain because it sees the value of it? So like a lot of what we're looking at is like bringing research science, research software engineering into the university as as a, a career path um and having those individuals be a kind of a consistent you know a consistent uh source for maintenance and other and other aspects of of research so it isn't something where a university like a uh the um a professor or a researcher has to constantly be you know looking for the next project to, to fund their work but it's like at least now you fund this and then it, you are able to shift it in a sustainable way shift it over to another body that then continues it so it's not just kind of wasted um wasted effort that you know after the funding's over there's something that keeps consistency so i mean that's something that we're definitely looking forward and i, I think what um what Kevin brought up about the, you know, about the fund, kind of how the funding cycle work is something that we're trying to figure out how to break away from that. And that's a lot of what where a lot of our thought process is also going. Okay, great. Um, thanks for that, Stephanie. Yeah, Jacob, I see your hand up. You're muted, Jacob. There we go. Uh, why don't you get a point of clarification how, how, how you're thinking in terms of um, 
metrics, metrics of OSPOs versus metrics that are helpful for OSPOs as tools. How an OSPO is judged is different than tools an OSPO may, be, may use to measure things about its open source efforts right. on certain verticals, et cetera. Yep. Well, I don't I I can answer that just from one perspective from the corporate OSPO side, as we're working with folks like at the to-do group. So there are, there have been some immediate set of questions, which is how do we as an OSPO demonstrate our value within an org? So it's metrics, it's kind of the first one. It's metrics of our OSPO. What is the impact that we're having? But at the same time, sure. I think we actually, yeah, do you have a comment? No, no, go ahead, Matt, finish up. Yeah, so then at the same time, it was also then about helping the projects that they support. And it was a little hard, it's a little hard to disambiguate some of those sometimes, because if part of our support in that setting is to demonstrate influence within a particular project, we would have metrics that look at that project in particular that demonstrate influence in that project, but that can also be something that aligns with strategic goals of the corporation that we want to either have more influence or less influence in a project as an example. So I understand your question. Um, so, I'm gonna be curious as to what other people are interested in. Yeah, I mean, the point I would add is this is a group looking at university open source, right? So it, it's not looking at OSPOs per se. Um, you know, the question that faculty come up with is I've produced open source software. Number one, I can't cite it properly, right? So are, are there metrics we can develop to do things like software citation? Um, and the other thing is, you know, for example, uh, what about security issues? So with CISA talking about security and NIST coming up with a framework and so on, are there metrics around that? So the faculty at our institutions are saying, sure, we like open source software, we can produce it, but if there are no metrics to measure that, you know, there's impact from it uh, and what that impact might be, particularly as it connects to some of the priorities of funding agencies, that's, you know, also is a piece of that potentially, but we also don't want to leave out universities that don't have hospitals, for example, right? Because they have faculty asking the same kinds of questions. So, it, Saeed, I understood your, your question to be a bit more of the latter, if I was to look at these two, or the answer to the question, a bit more of the latter, metrics of OSPOs versus metrics that OSPOs provide to projects? I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't think we need to start from the OSPO per se, right? We need okay. to think about university open source broadly from the faculty perspective in particular. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree too. I think that the one follows the other. I think if we had the, the metrics um, that we can provide projects, I think that that in and of itself shows a value for of the OSPO, though so I, you know, it kind of leads into the, 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 whatever, the metrics of OSPO question. Um, and then I definitely, I think my focus has been more on the metrics for the projects that we support or are interacting with more than the metrics for, that we are using for our own work. So, um, but so I, I would agree with Sayid on that. Okay. Um, Jacob, did that help? Yeah, I just wanted to get, Make sure that sure. there are two different ways of looking at this and we get some clarity on it helps us too. Yes, I think it's a great question. It helps me too. <laughs> um, so Saeed and I both have to drop off because it is the bottom of the half hour. I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth, who has agreed to kind of lead the, and we can all do this collectively. Um, but maybe Elizabeth, a few things to think about is, you know, this has been a great conversation so far. And you know, what are things that we can do to help kind of move this conversation forward? Is it just continuing, you know, on these meetings? Anyway, things like that. Like how can we effectively support this conversation? Yeah, all right. Got you. Bye, Matt. Bye. <laughs> See you later. You're Inter gonna have to share. <laughs> You're gonna have to share. So oh yeah. Okay. Hold on one sec. Let me pull this out. Okay. I didn't think about that. 
it's all good. Got it. And I had to I had to zoom in my screen for another meeting and now I kind of really like it and I don't want to zoom out so everything's huge all the time now I love it because I'm old and my eyes aren't great so anyway. Um, so yeah so it looks like we're having some some themes emerging, it seems like at least and i'm seeing themes around sustainability um, themes around value um, what do you all think what what would be your preference. For a next step, just continue, continue the conversation. Do we want to start maybe thinking about like what does a sustainability metric look like? Like what would that mean? What would we be measuring? Things like that. Jacob has to leave also. Okay, bye, Jacob. What I would think you would sustain, especially within the uh, sustainability within the academic context, um, I it's I feel like it's a little different than sustainability elsewhere, but um, I'm sure there's some overlap and other people may disagree, but one of the issues I keep looking at with regards to projects that we, we support or want to support and interact with is not just sustainability, but re relevance to the current state of technology. And I think that that's something that is, I, I think it's less I think because academia can be a little more stovepiped, a little more like insular, that they the question of relevance or isn't always like so we make this great thing, but are we is it actually something that that should be sustainable? Like does it need to be sustained? Um, and I think that that's a question that that uh, I, maybe happens in other open source projects, but I think in academia it doesn't happen often enough. Like, do we really need to, like, oh, we made this great thing um, and either people forget about it or um, or people continue to, to to keep it up, but maybe it's not the the what we should be spending our time on and trying to figure out how to, to get that balance right. I think it's something that that we um, that we're, we're looking for as well with regards to long term sustainability of the ecosystems involved and that we're working with. Stephanie, is that is that kind of what you were saying? Like, is it worth our time to spend resources on this project? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, how do you how do you make that? Yeah, basically, yeah. How do you make that call? Because um, I do, I do, like, I do think that it's important to um, to understand. I mean, whenever we have this discussion about sustain, oh, how do I sustain this project? It's like, how do you get that first question answered? Of like, well, do you need to sustain this project? You know, and that, and then, and then. And how do you like how how does that judgment call me? Because I think that that's a big from from also from our perspective, you know, it's limited resources. Um, so how do you best and how do you so how do you best um, use them? Like I don't want to have these like all everything that is particularly open that is open sourced within my university is something that I want to spend time on. Well, maybe that doesn't you know that isn't necessarily the best use of the resources. You really want to have the technologies that are the most um, you know, fundamentally like change, you know, cutting edge or changing or, or, or unique. Um, and how do you make that call as well? So not just what the communities look like, but also what, you know, how are they impacting um, the research, the academia, you know, outside the outside communities and the like. So, so um, at the Ford Foundation thing, one thing that got brought up a couple times that uh, really struck a chord was what does sunsetting or end of life look like? And yeah. the funders wanting to know that. And so they're saying, if something isn't technologically relevant anymore, what do we do? And then also, what do we do for things that um, don't actually need any more innovation, maybe, mm -hmm. but still also need to be securely maintained as well because they're used as building blocks? And so that was a question that I think was on uh, at least a couple of the funders' minds, including the U.S. government. So, um, yeah, something along those lines is probably good. Um, but like the other guy said, a lot of them were concerned about um, they don't normally measure community. And so they're like, is there, you know, a standard for that? Of course, everybody always asks me if there's a standard for something these days. Um, <laughs> like, I don't know, go look, there's 24,000 of them, um, <laughs> on just my side, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, <laughs> big bitchy, but, uh, 
yeah, what does that look like? Um, and so that's the terminology. I, I don't know if that fits in with yours in regards to technical um, relevance, but uh, to me, it was mostly about, you know, should this still, you know, it, it does anyone ask those questions and it doesn't feel like we ever do. Thanks. If I may just add in there as well, just to to it remind me of of the one of the conversations that we had from the university perspective as well, which I probably didn't emphasize, uh, it relates to what both Stephanie and Salona were just saying there, um, in relation to many research projects, um, like the bar for what's considered to be a successfully open sourced research project may not be the same as a successful open source project, right? That the, there was a there was a whole point about maybe some of these projects are never meant to have a community and, and don't necessarily have commercial um, applicability after the fact or sustainability goals or anything. So, but, but, they're still, but they still can be successfully open sourced, question mark, even if they don't necessarily have efforts around community and stuff like that. Um, so the, there, is a, there is this idea that there's different classifications of kind of open source in the university sector that may have completely different goals than perhaps in the commercial sector, um, where, where um, they may just only be temporal and not really meant for the long term, and that's okay. But how do we even say that or, or classify that? Um, that's the first point. And then the second point is just on the on the point that was made in the chat about open science. So I'd certainly like to just make sure we capture that as well. Um, obviously, there's huge overlap with open science. Um, just as a note to say that in Ireland anyway, the open science discussions don't really emphasize a lot of the open source kind of discussion. So this will amplify and help that discussion and help show the relevance there, but just to also note that. Yeah, um, it's, it's very uh, curious that different classifications of projects, and that's one reason um, that chaos metrics, we try to be very agnostic and say, oh, you're bad if this is your number. We And we get to ask that question quite a lot, like, am I good? Am I bad? What am I doing? And, and it's so context specific for every project that we really try not to make that kind of judgment and just leave it up to whoever is the one that cares about it, <laughs> you know? And so, and also we, you know, we, we tend to tell people to look at trends as well, not just like single data points. So that's, um, that's something I think that is very uh, universal to have those different classifications of projects, which I think is super important to make sure we, we remember here. That's great. Any other thoughts on this? Yeah. So, so, um, do you know if anyone's ever done a comparison on some of these different things, like maybe from like a design patterns or process perspective? Because like, I feel like, you know, I, I, I'm constantly having conversations with my mother, who's like a top ranked research scientist. You know, she runs this facility with over 100 different scientists underneath her. You know, she does a lot of the peer review and publishing and da, 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 da. And then, of course, we've watched a lot of her funding change where you know, by law, certain things have to be open data, you know, some of the stuff needs to be open source code, um, though not necessarily <laughs> under uh, a process that we might be <laughs> wanting or desiring, um, because, you know, so, so much seems to be like, you know, create, you know, kill, kill a tree and then never revisit it. Uh, but, um, you know, have we gone through and like, you know, Stephanie, because I know I participated in that great thing that y'all did with Amanda, because sorry, um, but I was like wondering if there was something along those lines of looking at these different open source processes that are happening and are be being oftentimes required um, that parallel open source and a lot of the different things that we do and some of the different ways that we do it. Um, because that might be a really good translation model for yeah. some of these metrics. Yeah, I don't, I mean, we're, I don't feel like we have anything that's set, but I think that that is really, I think, creating, I, I think that would be a real good add to if having a process that that everyone could um, kind of see and relate to. I, I do, do think it's a bit, like, magical at this point, <laughs> how we look well, at and, it. And, and it's crazy, too, because, you know, the whole reason that I came into the whole citability thing and how I got on my whole open source journey back in 2004 was because of my mother. Um, and because I was raised with a science background and, you know, when Jimmy Wales came out with Wikipedia and citation needed, this, this gal was all in, 
<laughs> in regards to that, you know, and then watching a bunch of these different things happen, you know, that was basically my gateway drug into open source was, yeah. was that. And, and I feel like there's a, a huge amount of parallel. And even when I was, you know, um, advocating for the ACLU on a bunch of digital privacy, you know, issues, once again, who was side by side with me? the librarians yeah you no know? so <laughs> there's like I man I love librarians okay it's just I, I'm sorry they're my favorite people um but uh you know they're living the fantasy okay they're living the fantasy <laughs> I know they're not I haven't I have an aunt that's a librarian <laughs> uh but I'm but what I'm looking for is like on those numbers um once again so that we can maybe figure out a parallelism that's going mm -hmm. on there or a breakdown of it or something about that living the fantasy being a librarian Jen, yeah i know right the only the only thing that would have made me happier is if all i i would i would pass a bill that all libraries have to have cats or maybe <laughs> have a hypoallergenic section or something i don't know but you know that would be the fantasy for me is you know a librarian with cats <laughs> No, I think it's funny because we are now because we're working now with um with all of with within the system. So you know we went from UC Santa Cruz specific to like the larger UC system, and it, it's really noticeable the the extent to which the libraries that, that so we we're now we're basically working with all the libraries, all the libraries working together, um or other or there's everyone's you know so there is some sort of touch like the, the libraries have somehow touched all of the other the OSPO activities. Um, and that I, I totally agree. It's but there. It I think that there are structures that we could use that are existing in libraries, uh, at least from our like especially the university library system within UC. Uh, that I think would help some of these discussions too, because they have these processes and already involved, like already maintained for a lot of their activities. Um, so it's it's definitely something that we're we're, we're looking for, and yes, I, I totally agree. I love librarians. I'm having having put together some some proposals, like joint proposals with all the UCs, which I thought was going to be a nightmare. It's like, oh, but it's librarians, and they all get along, and they know how to do this. It's been great. So. Well, I think it would be a really good gateway into them, right? Is it, yeah. and, and and the funding, right? Is to sit there and say, okay, what is the language that you're speaking? Do we have things that have equivalencies? and bringing that to the table so that, you know, since we're in the, you know, university OSPO plus plus, you know, yeah. <laughs> discussion, um, I think that would be like ridiculously useful. Yeah. I, I guess I'll just throw out as a librarian that, um, I don't know, I, I definitely resonate with a lot of what you're talking about and like bringing the libraries in makes a lot of sense. I think libraries are often weirdly positioned um, like you were talking about faculty and librarians often aren't really like observed as faculty or, uh, and so the the status is a little different, right? Um, on the other hand, we're expected to provide a lot of things. And so that does leave us looking more like people that are building infrastructure um, despite being chronically underfunded. Uh, and then I guess also just like the sort of coordinate, like, I, I don't know what every place is like, but Cornell is very um, independently minded. And so like the idea of like a central office that was like finding everybody and coordinating everybody, I can see there being also like resistance to that kind of thing, you know, of like, what are you gonna do with our project or whatever? Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, I feel like for our library, we're certainly really, really active in open source. And, and we also suffer from that. Someone was talking about sort of like a, a silo or a stove paper. I don't remember which one it was, um, where it's sort of like we're active in open source, but sometimes we act like no one has ever done open source source before. And so we don't necessarily look around at what else is mm -hmm happening and that seems to be like a, a thing so and that was part of my interest in in this because this is so I mean obviously this is like so much big time open source versus our you know small scale library open source and to like kind of look at that bigger world yeah I think that the the question about siloing is is super because I think the being able to Kind of connect yeah I, I, it's like it is that weird because there, there are different sizes different like levels of impact of each each project that we maybe want to support or somehow get connected with but uh so but you want to be able to break down the silo but then also recognize that there you know are differences in these projects 
Um, so people can learn from it, but it, 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 like, there's not a one size fits all as well. So it's it's kind of the, I think there's a uh, a little bit of conflict there and, or not conflict, but there's a, you know, there's a methodology. I think the, pro, you know, some of the processes and procedures uh, would help if they're, you know, established procedures on how to interact and how to, and I don't want to say judge, but how to kind of evaluate the different projects um, in ways that, but with, with the idea of, you know, supporting, supporting uh, the, their growth or their, Sustain, uh, not sustainability. So, so it's supporting them, but without like having preconceived idea about what the next step is supposed to be. And I think that's something that we're we 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 have been struggling with. Like, well, you know, how do how do you do that for the wide variety of activities that are that are going to be going on, kind of under the realm of open source and academia. Uh, one of the one of the kind of key questions. Uh, that's that's related to sustainability or or whether something even needs to be sustainability uh, kind of comes down to uh, what we mean by open source in in academia. So I, I think a lot of open source projects in academia are kind of built in a more traditional way, in a very in, in kind of a closed source way, and then we'll put an open source license on it. So uh, when we when we do that, are we building? Are we just building this tool uh, without thoughts around sustainability? Uh, whereas there's also this idea of open source collaboration, right? Where we're we're building this out in the open, and projects that are being built out in the open with this this open collaboration, they're often concerned about sustainability. Uh, because we need to build the community to help us uh, support and continue working on this project. And I think in, in academic open source, there's often some confusion about which one we want to do or which one we're doing. And if I, if I say I'm doing open source, it could mean that I've just slapped an open source license on something I built internally, or in the case of kind of some of the, like the big kind of open source infrastructure projects, like some of the, uh, the open science kind of Python projects, you know, those are very much about community because they have a lot of dependencies uh, and it's, and they're built, they're built in the open. Uh, I would add one other potential flavor of that, which is just open source as publication. So um, it's not even a project. It's not even collaboration necessarily. It's just part of the publication process and making it usable by other researchers for, for easy validation. I was basically going to say something similar in regards to it where, um, you know, like with Hyperledger Fabric, this one academic group did this amazing thing in regards to how to make it like really freaking fast and then did and it, and, and then just like did exactly what you were talking about. It just went wee and then like left it. <laughs> and the community is like, you've done nothing to integrate with us. You haven't participated with us at all. You know, this is going to require some huge changes. And the fact that now you're not willing to dedicate resources to it, you know, made it very hard for that team to take them seriously on it because it was very, very problematic. And so it's just like, um, yeah, that's kind of what I meant about the killing the tree part. It's like I've, I've published it and now I'm done with it and I don't have to follow up on it at all. Uh, and and how to to get past on that um, uh, that problem because I find that a lot of times you know who who becomes the dropouts are the people who decide oh this project is so good I'm not going to do academia anymore <laughs> I'm just going to do this project uh, so you know I would like to sit there and if if it's not necessarily an anti pattern that maybe at least it needs labeling or expectation management in regards to it, because I feel like that's gonna happen a lot with the government funding, is there's gonna be a lot of groups that come in like, <coughs> sorry, I've got a bit of a cough, um, get a bunch of money, say they're gonna do it open source, and then you know here comes a flaming tarball at you of you know tens of thousands of lines of code. Oh, the community didn't accept it. Oh, gee, hmm. You know, and so then they go and they, they gobble up all the money. Um, and so I worry about, you know, similar things in that realm. And just to be, and just to be clear, it's, it's okay to 
build something and put an open source yeah. license on it without uh, without having that open collaboration. It's just a, I think it really is about having clear understanding of of what it is we're building or what we're doing and what our goals and expectations are. I mean, it's it's way better than the alternative, right? I mean, <laughs> otherwise, no one uses it or ever sees it. <laughs> Well, I think sometimes for scientists, they also have different definitions as to how they think about that community, right? Because they expect you to go do reprodu reproducibility, right? So they're like, yeah, of course I published it and I put it out there and I did I did exactly what needed to be done. And now what you need to do is you need to go do the exact same thing, repeat all that work and prove it, right? That's reproducibility. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes that cultural mismatch isn't always... Uh, <laughs> explains this correctly yeah i mean i think it it's it's related i mean it, it's it's one of the reasons it's hard to do open source inside of a university like in like I, in some ways i feel like it should be way easier but in other ways like the people that are actually writing code are not interested in that type of activity <laughs> they're interested in like showing their bona fides to the world and moving on to the next thing to get another publication and it um it's it's harder than I would have thought to find people interesting in in building a long term project builder folks. I think uh, part of part of building community is about relinquishing some control of the project. Uh, and academics in general, I, I don't think they like to relinquish control. Uh, yeah, well, that was I would say that was exactly a problem we have with one project where. Somebody created it, but didn't really want to maintain it, but also didn't want to give up control over it. And we're just like, so yeah, the creating this ecosystem is really tough when you have someone that 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 is kind of torn. They're not necessarily an they open source, they 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 developed it in open source, it has collaboration, but aren't willing to kind of take those the steps that are necessary because you know they their their focus is again publishing act, you know, and other, you know creating an academic career versus creating this open source project and maintaining it. I, I can tell you, I'm like, I wonder if it's analogous. So, you know, I and my colleagues spend a lot of time classifying faculty <laughs> and graduate students as entrepreneurial or not. And mm -hmm. like, it's, you know, it's one in like a thousand or something yeah. <laughs> or actually yeah. like have the level of enthusiasm and, and uh, um, well, what's the word vision, I guess, maybe. Yeah. To, to bring something to the world and then like trying to find what like I think you need similar stuff to launch and endeavor upon like maintaining an open source project and like that's an even you know smaller fraction of, <laughs> of whatever those people are within a university it's kind of how I think about it yeah. now I think we had we had that I mean just from a very practical perspective when we got our start with cross because we had a you know open source project that went big and that student sage while who you know who is like is that is that exact one in a thousand entrepreneurial student he basically like was able to do this and so we thought you know and there we you know naively thought that we were gonna be able to find additional like sage ish like folks and um and we did but you know they it wasn't as we didn't that 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 model didn't necessarily repeat itself uh in the way that we expected with when as we were doing cross so the ospo were trying to like rethink it like well how do you you know you great you get a sage every one in a thousand students but how do you help the uh, the non-sage folks how do you help the other ones that and i think that that's something that we are developing now like how what are the other options that also um increase that also show like success or a, a viable path to creating an open source project that actually has impact um, and that, and that, that's where that's a lot of what we we've been focusing on now. So, you know, just recognize you only get one sage, maybe. <laughs> so, these are fantastic conversations, and um, I'm really looking forward to the next meeting. We are a little bit over time, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Um, so, I think for our next steps, I think maybe we all just kind of think about um, the conversations we had here, unless somebody wants to take some action and start maybe putting some things down on paper, but. Um, I think we can absolutely continue these conversations next time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, great. Right. Thank you. Great to see everybody. Thank you so much yeah. for coming. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.